الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى advises us in his glorious book in the last verse in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse 200 بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون O you have believed Persevere and endure and stand on guard and fear Allah that you may be successful. So in this last verse in the surah is four commands from Allah. It says, if you want to be successful, here's the formula. Here are four commands for you to apply to be successful. And the verse begins by addressing the believers. Ya ayyuhalladheena aminu. So, Allah Taala is addressing the people who believed in Him and believed in Allah as one, as present, as powerful, as you know, wise, and all His beautiful attributes. Those are the ones we are, the ones who are addressed. Because a believer has a spiritual contract with Allah. So when Allah says, Ya ladina amanu, say, Yes, Allah. Yes, Allah. Order us. What do you want us to do? That's the contract that we have in Allah to believe in Him and to obey Him. And every believer will respond in accordance to their faith. The ones with a high level of faith will respond very strongly. And the ones with not so will, you know, will kind of waffle. So the, the orders that Allah wa ta'ala gives us is the first order is isbiru, persevere, have patience. And it is said that patience is half of faith. And some scholars have said patience is all of faith. The entire faith is, is patience. You have to have it. You cannot live in this life without it. And patience is needed for everything. You need it for acts of worship. Waking up for Fajr is not easy. Especially in the summer when it's 3 something, 4 o'clock. The patience to, 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 pers- to continue doing good deeds, to spend, to earn a lawful living when, when bad, you know, you know, other ways that you can make more money but they're not lawful are present. That requires patience that you hold yourself from, you know, doing that by obeying Allah and, and you know, persevering. Lowering the gaze, you know, requires patience. Speaking the truth requires patience. When, when you say it, you, may be, you might get canceled, you may get attacked, you may get you know, described as a terrorist or this or that. So it requires patience and it requires courage. And dealing with others, anytime you deal with others, you have to have patience because y- you will get, you know, you try to do good to people and you'll get you know, abuse back from, from some. But you have to have patience and you have to keep doing it because you're doing it for the sake of Allah. And patience can only happen when matters are clear. If the matter is very clear to you, you will have patience. I'll give you an example. If you go to the dentist, you have a bad toothache. And the dentist says, you have a heart problem. I cannot give you Novocaine. I cannot anesthetize you. We're going to have to do the whole procedure. You know, here's a stick, bite on it. What do you do? You're going to sit there and you're going to be patient and you're going to take the pain. Why? Because you know it is for your own good. When that knowledge is there, I mean, compare that to a kid. You put a kid in there and the kid starts hurting. He's not going to put up with it. But the more things are clear to you, patience become, become more clear that you have to have patience. And, and you know, so, so getting knowledge and getting that, you know, that, that higher level of knowledge will help you with, with patience. You may not live the life, you know, this, in this life, you may not live how you, you know, want to. You may want you know, a, a nice house, a this and that, and it may not materialize. But that's fine. Because we do not live for this life. This life is a test. The real life is the life in the hereafter. And because we live for the hereafter, patience is required. Because a lot of things that's going to happen in this life, we're not going to agree with. 
and we're going to have to you know, exert effort, and it requires a lot of patience to go through it. And having and the patience that Allah wants us to have is for his sake. That's the prescribed one that Allah is telling us to have. Patience for Allah's sake, for the love of Allah, because we want to please him, we want to obey him, we want to stay away from the things that he says don't do. And we want to do the things that he said please do. So that's that's the patience that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala wants to have from us. That's the first order. The second order was sabiru and encourage others to persevere. Now, a believer is not selfish. Allah does not tell you, oh, you just be patient and that's it. No, you have to encourage others to be patient as well. Because a, a believer is, does not live by himself, he lives in a community. And when everyone encourages everybody else to have patience, you know, when they have difficulties, you help them, you encourage them, you tell them the reward that is in store for the one who has patience. That's when you encourage them, that's, you know, it, it, it gets the, the community more cohesive. And imagine when you're all by yourself, and we experienced that when COVID started, you know, a year and a half ago, we were all isolated. The stress goes up, and now you feel like you're all by yourself, you have to face all the difficulties all by yourself. But when everyone around you is willing to lend a hand, that's a beautiful society that you want to live in. And Allah Taala wants us to all to have patience and encourage others to have patience as well. And we have to remind each other that of the verse in Surah Az-Zumar, chapter 39 in the ending of verse 10, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Indeed, the patient will be given their reward without limits. Every good act that we do has, carries a reward between 10 to 700, except patience. It's unlimited. Allah Taala takes care of giving you the reward, and the reward is Jannah. It's infinite. It's like getting, giving someone a blank check. Here's a blank check. Put whatever number that you want on. That's, what, that's the reward for patience. So it is worthy to, to endure whatever we have to endure to have patience and be on the, on the straight path. So have patience and encourage others to have patience, then wait for divine help. The third order is warabitu, stand on guard. Now, ribat is, is understood also from, from jihad. Like when you're in a battle and you're a soldier, you're, you're, you're positioned on a point on the perimeter, you are performing ribat. You're there, you're on guard, you're vigilant, you're defending your area. That's what, what ribat means. So the, we have a believer has to always be prepared and vigilant. Because the enemies of the faith are all around. The battle between good and evil is as old as man is. From the time that Adam was created till the end of time, we will always have evil and good will always fight with evil. Evil, evil will lose. But how long does it take to lose? We don't know. But the good will always, will always win and it will win in the end. So sometimes the good prevails, sometimes evil prevails according to Allah's wisdom. And we are in time, these times are times of great evil. We are not living in the time that the Sahaba were living in where, where the society was all righteous and good was everywhere. That's why the Prophet ﷺ misses us. And he said, you know, his, his companion said, do you mean us? He said, no, I, I mean people who are going to come after you and they're going to have your reward because they had somebody to help them be good. But in this time... I mean, we don't have anyone to help us. I mean, we're, we're on our own, basically. Small groups, instead of having a whole nation, a whole you know, country where everyone is helping everyone and everyone is good and you can sleep with your door open. Those days are gone. We live in evil times. And we have to be especially on guard in, in this time. A believer strives for perpetual charity, Right? I mean, that, that's the goal in this life. We want perpetual charity. You don't want to do things that end with your end of your life. You want to have sadaqah jariyah. 
you want to have this perpetual charity that after you die, then it keeps earning for you, whether it's you invested in a masjid, in a, in a school, in a hospital, in a good, in righteous children, in whatever that is. So a ribat, to be on guard, is you have to make sure that that investment is protected. Because if you do not protect that investment, the enemies will come, they'll kill your children, they'll close the masjid. And we saw them. They closed all the masjids a year and a half ago. See how easy it was. They closed the masjids. They can destroy, you know, destroy a hospital. So all of your investment that you're hoping to get for the hereafter, they can come and destroy. That's why you have to be on guard. You have to perform ribat to protect your investment in the hereafter. So if Muslims are weak and they are not on guard, the enemies will come and they will enforce their principles and dictate their cultures and practices on them. All you have to do is in this country, if you are not vigilant and protecting your kids, your kids are going to be brainwashed at school, brainwashed with their friends, and they're going to adopt practices that are un-Islamic, and you won't even recognize who they are anymore. So we have to be vigilant as parents. We have to be vigilant as, as people in charge of a community. We have to protect ourselves, our children, our family, our community, and we all we ha have to be on, you know, vigilant to protect our investment in the hereafter. And the last order is, Fear Allah and have taqwa. Because when you move about in order to be patient and encouraging others to be patient and performing to be on guard, you will act. A human being is not a stationary thing. You're in motion. And that motion, you know, can carry... You know, you, you can go right and you can go left. You can go, you do good, you can do wrong. So you have to fear Allah. You have to have that taqwa to drive you in the right direction. And taqwa, if you want to just kind of have, a, have a, a very simple formula for it, it's Allah finds you where he ordered you and he does not find you where he forbade you. That's what taqwa is. You put a protection between you and Allah's anger. That's what taqwa is. So everything that you do, everything that you say, you always take it back and say, does Allah approve? Will that make him happy? And that's when you act. When you have that taqwa, then you act. So when, and Allah says, if we do all of these, then we have, we will be successful. And the word that was used in the verse is, Tuflihun from falah. Falah is different from najah. Najah is success, like when you pass an exam. That's a one thing. It's a one, it's a very limited in scope. Falah is success in everything. You will succeed in your life, you'll succeed in your marriage, you'll succeed in your work, you'll succeed in this life, and you'll succeed in the hereafter. When you are patient, you encourage others to be patient, you are on guard and you have taqwa of Allah when you have all of these four ingredients you've made it you've made it in this life and you expect the infinite reward from Allah in the hereafter so we have to be cognizant of of these verses and these commands in the Quran Allah is not just putting it in there so we can read it and get ten rewards per letter it's it's in the Quran so we, it can dictate how we act in this life. So we have to, you know, don't read it as oh, Allah is saying that. It's an order addressed to you. So implement it the best that, that you can. And if we fall short, we only have ourselves to blame.